Well, first of all, thank you all very much for coming. My name is Sandra Finlay, and I'm the leader of the Green Party of Saskatchewan. And it's, it's really our pleasure to have been able to sponsor Chad Kister's visit here to Saskatoon. And it's been a whirlwind. Uh, we picked him up at the train this morning at 1 o'clock, and he's been at Mount Royal Collegiate. We were there by quarter past eight this morning, and from there on, we were over to the French Elementary School on the other side of town, and he knows 8th Street really well. We were then back downtown to uh, hit Jeff Rockstad at noon on CTV, and then over to Holy Cross, and then back downtown for CFCR, and now we're here this evening. So Chad is just very generous with his time and um, has a, a, a very solid presentation, which I'm, I know you'll enjoy. The, the, uh, the, so I, I think that the best thing to do is to, in some ways, just let Chad introduce himself. He's from Ohio and has been in the Arctic. It's not as though he's writing about the Arctic or making things up. He's been up there to check things out for himself and is very concerned about what he is do, uh, seeing. And I think there are very many people today who have come to realize that if we're going to change things, that maybe we have to get out there and do some of that ourselves. And Chad is one of the people who is doing that. And it's your support here for him. And, and through the, the schools that we visited this afternoon, and I know his message reached lots of people through the media as well. So even though they aren't here, I'm sure that they are you know, thinking and, and what they're saying is causing them to think more. So without any further words from me, here's Chad. Thanks for coming out. So, yeah, the, this is the polar bear survival tour, and whether the polar bear survives or not is really up to us. Uh, the predictions now are for the extinction of the polar bear as early as 2040. This has been revised from just two years ago from 2080 to 2040 because their scientists are finding that the melting in the Arctic is happening far faster than previously thought. Now, the polar bear recently evolved from the grizzly bear, turning all white to blend into the Arctic environment. And the polar bear lives out on the pack ice in 19 different population groups. And the polar bear eats 98% of its diet is seal, and it needs the ice as a platform in order to hunt seal and also to rest from after, uh, during meals. And the, what's happening is the ice in the Arctic has already reduced in thickness by 42% in the last 40 years. This is very well documented with submarine data, and with sonar data, and now with satellite data. And also the extent of the sea ice has retreated by 25% in the last 30 years. And what this is doing is taking away the habitat that the polar bear depend upon. The polar bear depend upon being able to get to land and back out to the pack ice. And with the retreating pack ice, they are having to go through more and more water to do this and are drowning. Now, historically, 90% of polar bear denned out on the pack ice in the Arctic Ocean, with 10% denning on land. This changed to, for about a decade ago, uh, two-thirds of polar bear had their dens out on the pack ice, with one-third of polar bear having their dens on land. And just in the last 10 years, this changed to where only one-third of polar bear are now denning out on the pack ice, and two-thirds having their dens on land. Now, this has doubled the importance of protecting the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge in northeast Alaska, because it is among the densest denning grounds of polar bear in North America. And it also should really wake people up as to the seriousness of this issue. If we see that degree of change uh, from one-third uh, denning on land to two-thirds in just one decade, um, things are really changing. And the polar bear is really the canary in the coal mine. And if we can uh, 
if we can make the polar bear survive, then we have a good chance of, of, of permitting the survival of a lot of other species. 60% of all of the species on our planet are now expected to go extinct by the end of the century because of climate change, if we continue the status quo. Now, the polar bear have already reduced in the number of offspring by 15% in the last 25 years, and they have also reduced in average weight by also 15% in the last 25 years. This according to the Arctic Impact Assessment, the 300 scientists involved in that study. Uh, and uh, if the polar bears could only organize, we would have mass demonstrations um, and both in D.C. And, and Ottawa trying to get some action on this issue. Now, many people mistakenly think of the Arctic as a barren wasteland. Uh, that is, could not be further from the truth. The Arctic is full of life, and that life is dependent upon the pack ice. The phytoplankton live on the bottom of the pack ice, and those plants form the base of the food chain. As the phytoplankton sink, they feed benthic organisms, or clams, which themselves feed walrus and uh, a number, large number of species. The Arctic is full of life. Uh, Arctic cod, uh, Arctic char, walrus, beluga whale, bowhead whale, narwhale, uh, which of course the polar bear, which uh, feeding native peoples like the Inuit and Inupiat peoples, but it's all dependent upon the pack ice. As the pack ice retreats, so goes the life in the Arctic. Now the Arctic is also considered by scientists like the air conditioning uh, unit of the world as the, uh, the snow and ice in the summertime reflects 80 to 90 percent of the solar radiation back out to space. And oceanic currents take that cold Arctic uh, water and air and move it to um, tropical regions. And these oceanic currents, however, are slowing down. And the difference between zero degrees and one degree is a phenomenal one in the Arctic. It's the difference between species being able to walk out on the pack ice or having to swim. And the, um, the ice is also critical in the inland areas. The permafrost holds up the, the land in much of the Arctic and also many of the cities that are built um, all the permafrost are dependent upon the frozen ground. They used to call permafrost permanently frozen ground until the advent of global warming. It is now melting. And you sure know this when you're hiking through the Arctic regions, that this permafrost holds up the moisture, making the Arctic region one of the largest wetlands in the world. And it is the destination of 160 species of birds from six continents, all 50 states in the United States, all the provinces of Canada, and all the territories of Canada go to breed up in Arctic regions. And also the permafrost holds up the stream, that keeps the streams in place uh, that meander throughout the Arctic and are full of fish and critical for the wildlife that live there. And also the lakes that are splashed throughout the Arctic region are dependent upon the permafrost that holds up these lakes. But what's happening is we are burning fossil fuels and also destroying our forests and massively increasing the greenhouse gas emissions on our planet.